you say I appreciate the opportunity. Appreciate the atmosphere. I'm glad you can get help. Amen. And iron does sharpen iron. Uh, yeah. And anytime you get around the Word of God, with the people of God, you can get help for your life. I don't have anything funny to say or any kind of cliche. The greatest thing I can say right now in this moment and atmosphere is what God has said. Yes, Amen. This is on my heart. I'm going to preach you the message. I'll get out of the way. But turn your Bibles to John 17. I do thank the Lord for salvation. He saved all three undeserved that He would save me and undeserved He saved all three of my young and I'm thankful, I'm thankful for that. John's Gospel, chapter 17. Of course you know, this is the high priestly prayer. The whole Bible is your own really holy ground. But one writer said this is the holy of holies. Because this is God talking to God. But I'm interested in what Jesus is praying about. Really more specific in who Jesus is praying for. I'll go to verse 9 and read through verse 15. The Bible says, I pray for them. Hallelujah. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me. For they, for they are thine. And all of mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Amen. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Father, thank you today for your sweet presence. Lord, guard our mind, our mouth, that we may rightly divide your truth. I pray your word have free course. Lord, you do what you set out to do. Fill us with your strength and your power and your unction we so desperately need. In Jesus' name, amen. This prayer is uttered somewhere between the upper room and before the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus here is preparing His disciples for His departure. He's given them miracles. He showed them miracles to prove of His person, to prove who He was. He's given them the I Am statements. He's told them that there was a comforter in the Holy Spirit. And then He tells them that they're going to have trouble. Been like that. You're going to have trouble. But don't worry. I've overcome. I've overcome the world. Jesus didn't pray that much in public but when he did, it was put on notice. Genuine prayer, genuine prayer often reveals a person's innermost being. Really what's on their heart and what's on their head. 
I want us to understand that Jesus spent five verses talking to the Father about His glory. He spent the rest of them, He spent the rest of them talking about His followers, talking about His church. You say, now nah, He's talking about the disciples here. I didn't read it, but I'm going to. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Yeah. Jesus is talking to the Father about me, about you. He's praying to the Father for His church. This is holy rain. First portion of this prayer it is for the Father's glory. The last part of this prayer is for their future glory. But part I want to deal with this morning is the followers and their goal. The followers and their goal. We started an inward prayer, went to an outward prayer, and ended with an upward prayer. But now the context of Jesus praying is just as just as important as the content content and the context of the prayer is the hours come. The cross was on the loom. Jesus knew what was laying ahead of him. But yet he thought enough of his bride to stop and pray, pray for the church going the hour of Jesus was death, but the hour for the disciples was life. Amen. Jesus had a cross in His future, but you and I do too. Amen. We have to die to ourselves, to our wants, to our ways. Sure. Christ here was very careful in setting forward the preparation for His followers. You say, why does this make it such a big deal? Because the New Testament church hadn't been birthed yet. But Jesus knew it was on the loom. And if the gospel was going to get go, going out in power and demonstration, it was going to be the followers that he was praying for. Amen. And thank God somebody told somebody and somebody told somebody. Amen. And hallelujah, somebody told me. Amen. The gospel. The necessity of this prayer rested in the cross in which his followers had to carry out into the world. Just a few things I want to emphasize. First, I want to make mention of the protection. Verse 11 and 12. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father, keep. Jesus has already got a heavenly perspective. Amen. Really, in his mind, the cross has already been done and come. He was headed that way. It was already, already finished. And now he's praying for his followers that the Father Amen. would keep them. That same Greek word used for the word kept, it's mentioned three times in two verses. It means to preserve, to stand firm, to watch, and to carefully attend. I just wanted to come and remind you this morning and to encourage you that not only did Jesus die for us, not only did Jesus take care of us, before it all, he prayed for his church and he prayed for the Father to carefully attend to it. Amen. Several things in this protection. First, he prayed for the protection in authority. The Bible says, I come to thee, Holy Father, keep them through thine own name. He didn't pray that he... That he'd keep the church with the angels. He didn't pray that he'd keep the church with the Baptists. He didn't pray that he'd keep the church in the preacher's ability or talent. He prayed that the church, that the followers would be kept in his name and his name alone. There's authority. There's power. This is the very creator God, a very God. And we are being kept 
thoroughly attended to today. Not only did he pray for the protection and authority, he prayed for the protection in unity. The Bible says that I come to thee, Holy Father, keep them through thy own name, those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one. He is in the one business. I read in the Bible there's one Lord, there's one faith, there's one baptism, there's one truth, there's one way. There's one life. Amen. He prayed for God the Father to carefully attend so that the church, so that his followers might be one. Not only just one, but that they would be one as we are one. There's never a time in Scripture, there's never a time in heaven where God the Father is upset at God the Son, where God the Son's upset at God the Spirit. They're in unity. The only time he had to turn his back on his boy is because he had my sin and he had your sin placed upon him. But hallelujah, he's praying for the church to be one. By the way, he started out with one at Pentecost and he'll end with one. We're on the same team. We're in the same playing field. I want to tell you something. Like, like, the, like the Trinity, they're unified in the Godhead, but they are distinct in person and function. You say, what's that mean? That means everybody don't have the ability to sing. I can sing and I'll let you know that. Everybody don't have the gift of this or the gift of that. We are distinct in, in our person, but we can come unified under Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. He prayed. He, he thought it enough on His way to the cross to stop. You say, you know what, Lord? Now you know what's going to happen. Here's my followers and all those that are going to believe. You keep them under the authority of your name. Amen. You carefully attend to them in the unity that they may be one. And then he also prayed in the protection of security. The Bible says in verse 12, While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept and none. None of them is lost. Eternal life brings lasting security. Every bit of authority to keep us never loses us. And what amazes me is God is talking to God about us. And He knows, He knows everything that's going to take place. He knows that Peter's going to deny him when he needs him the most. But he also knows that Peter is going to preach at Pentecost and 3,000 are going to be saved. This is, this is our security. He promised he will build his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. She was here in the first century. She'll be here in the last century. Why? Because he don't lose any. Amen. He thought enough of us to stop. One of the greatest, his, his, his entire mission was the cross. Right before his earthly ministry is done, the hour has come. He said, I want to pray to the Father. For my bride. You know, he kept saying that thou hast given me, thou hast given me. What do you give somebody that created it all, owns it all? Yeah. Amen. Us. That's what he gives us. Amen. That's what he gave me. Amen. The church. Yeah. And he prayed under the protection of authority and unity and security. 
And then last thing, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to be done. In tranquility. Verse 13 says, And now I come to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Jesus' kind of joy was not dependent upon the circumstances or the incidences of life. It was drawn from a knowledge that God had it well in hand. So He wants us to be unified. He secured us into being that. And now He wants us to have His joy until, until he returns. Peter said it was a joy unspeakable and full of glory. Now why would he do that? I'm going to read verse 23 and I, I'm done. He said in verse 23, I am them and thou in me, that they be made, may be made perfect in one. This is why. And that the world may know who I am. The Bible says that if they may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved me. I want to tell you something. He ain't writing to the world. He ain't praying for the world. But he wrote to the church and he's praying for the church. We are a unique bunch. Not because of who we are, but because of who he is. He has. He has prayed that we would be unified so that the world would know you going to fuss and cuss, put it on your church sign. But the world ain't going to want anything to do with that. They can get that at Walmart anytime they want. They say, well, they don't have my Walmart. We go to a kid's school pickup line and tell them I'm off. Yeah. On accident. Yeah, you're right. I believe it was MacArthur said this, but if you look like the world and act like the world... The church has absolutely nothing to offer the world. Jesus is praying to God the Father so that you and I could have joy fulfilled in Him. Amen. Amen. That's my Amen.